Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So today's uh, time lapse is really just a uh, sped up version of the entire class or section I've created for my next course. But what this is, is a perspective drawing. And I wanted to teach one, two, and three point perspective, or I'm in the process of teaching that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to start this one with a freehand method. Because although I don't implement this a lot in my work, there are definitely times when it's a good idea. So some of the reasons why drawing perspective freehand is a good idea, especially for comics. Uh, a, you kind of keep uh, an organic feel to the work, very natural feel. Uh, B, it's a bit quicker. C, it looks better for some panels. It, it gives more of a, an eerie kind of vibe or a, just more of a creative overall feel. I guess I won't keep listing letters here because there's the list goes on and on. But basically it retains a bit more energy. So hopefully you see that in this piece. And I'll tell you, I kind of learned more about that myself as I started to illustrate this because traditionally I would rule out a lot more lines. So what I did here is I did a rough sketch. Now you see me correcting the perspective. And keep in mind in the class and in the course, you're gonna see all this in real time and I explain every little bit of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing in real time. But just to give you the overall kind of uh, broad spectrum of what I'm doing, is I let myself draw and make mistakes in the thumbnail and the rough sketch, and then I slowly correct it as I keep revisiting the artwork. So you'll see by the end that doesn't mean that I get a very tight technical display of this alley, but instead I get a little bit more of a freehand kind of comic-y, comic booky. I don't know. Like I'm trying to say it's a little bit more cartoony than I would normally shoot for, but I I'll tell you, I like the energy of it. In fact, so much so that where I got done with this, I'm like ready to jump on the next one. And um, now when I teach two and three point perspective, I am going to use a little bit more structure because we're going to also talk about certain areas of why it makes sense to use structure. Like for instance, if you're maybe illustrating something that's very techy and modern and futuristic, then you're probably going to want to get a little bit more tight with your perspective rulers and things like that. But whenever it's something that you want to have uh, a little bit more of a an eerie vibe or uh, a gritty feel to it, you can get a lot done with just keeping the perspective in mind, but not adhering too tightly. So each time you see a little line kind of shoot across, I'm actually doing this inside of uh, Clip Studio Paint Manga Studio, and I'm using the shift click. Now we all know if we've dealt with that program that this has some amazing perspective tools and I could have did all of this with those tools but the other thing I tend to notice is when I use those too much I uh, it takes away a certain creativeness like I start to think less about what to draw and how to draw it in maybe a uh, you know cool way or something and I start to think more about all the angles and how it fits together and the you know the forced perspective of it um, so yes yeah, it seems to just pull me out of the creative moment for some reason um, so you got to use it uh, sparingly, I think. Now, another thing that's a good idea is you can draw out perspective grids. And I'm actually going to make some of those and share them uh, maybe on here as well, but definitely in the class content and things like that and uh, on Gumroad, whatever. But I'll make them so that people can practice drawing their, you know, two, three point perspective illustrations, one point perspective, whatever. Practice drawing it over top. So you set up these grid patterns blue line it or knock it down with you know less opacity and then draw over top so you're forcing yourself to be um you know to use your freehand ability to draw uh but you're not snapping every line so you you still end up with this uh you know this more fluid feel to the work uh but you have a, a very distinct um grid pattern to aid you so i think this helps in the very beginning like here i didn't do much of it you can see i just kind of I checked it a few times and I threw in some scribble lines here and there, but you see a lot of those blue lines are freehand as well. So I didn't feel the need to do it, but you know, I've been drawing a long time so I can fake it a little bit here and there. Um, and you know, ultimately you just got to remember that if it looks wrong, redraw it. And when you have the ability to draw digitally, uh, and I say even traditionally, cause you can just use light tables and vellum and that, but uh, or even stick a piece of paper over a bad area, draw over top. I used to do that on Bristol board all the time. But, uh, you know, if you're if you're drawing digitally, there's no reason that even the inking stage has to be your last stage. you got to remember that you can 
come back with translucent ink or whiteout and you can make some edits and then you can re-ink over top. So as long as you kind of always realize that you can nudge things around and edit and then get more creative with your edits, uh, then you don't feel like you're backed into a corner and you can keep adding to an illustration like this and you can just keep uh, moving forward. Um, but I'll tell you, I really enjoyed this process. I recommend you try it. So again, this is just a single vanishing point sitting on a low horizon line and then sketching out from there. And a lot of in the rough sketch, I just thought like, you know, hey, maybe a tipped over trash can, maybe some pieces of paper flying around, uh, maybe some eerie little, you know, dirty, grungy stuff here and there. I wasn't, wasn't too uh, particular, except I just kept adding stuff and I kept trying to incorporate overlaps in the work so that it creates depth. So I'd love to know what you think of this particular video. And if you're interested in the class, I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below. This will also be a full course later, so be on the lookout. So as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.